Hare Krishna, welcome to the Dom Good Podcast, your favorite Hare Krishna lifestyle podcast. I am your host, Prema Rupa. As you can see, if you're watching uh, the video version, I am alone today. Um, yeah, I usually have a partner with me, um, but it's that time of the year in Mayapur where everyone is super busy, but a lot of you have been asking me, Prema, what's going on with the podcast? I haven't seen an episode of the podcast lately. And did a poll on Instagram and I was like, would it be okay if I just shot this alone? And I got a lot of responses that was like, yeah, why not? So I'm just here to check in with all of you um, and just let you know I'm alive and well. I would love to continue the podcast. I think what we have is very unique here um, because we're just straight up nonsense, prajalpa, regular devotees talking about life and whatever. And um, I want to do that with you and hang out with you and um, just have a very chill, low-key time. Um, just talking about my poor life, Dom life, devotee life, life life, whatever. So glad to check in with all of you again. Uh, also, I don't know if you stay till the end of the podcast, but um, I do try to feature a Harinam that went on somewhere in the world every week so if you went on harinam and you've got like a a minute or two of a recording of that harinam tag me in it send it to me in the dms you can check out my email below and send it to me in the email i'd love to feature it at the end of um a podcast um and let other people see what you've been up to and a harinam could have 100 people 10 people you and a couple friends under a tree it could be you alone with a pair of car dolls whatever it is that it's a harinam so Please, if, you, if you've been in a Harinam recently, this week, send it to me. Let us all see. So, I'm having a very low-key day today. Did you see this? I'm just like, I've got my glasses on. I've got my hair in two ponytails. In my mind, I'm like, oh my god, I'm going to look so cute in ponytails. I feel like I look ridiculous. But I'm just like, you know what? When you start it, you just you just go with it. You just, you just go with it. I was talking to a friend of mine yesterday and we were talking about like, what do you pray for when you go to the temple? And I'd love to hear what you guys think. If you could leave me a comment and just tell me, what do you pray for? And really like, what do you pray for? Like really? Cause I know like devotees are supposed to pray for devotional service, right? And I was like, what do you pray for? And he was like, purification and guru seva. I was like, okay, like I don't pray for it. Eh, anything like that i was listening to a lecture by a devotee um a friend of mine and she was like oh yes but who sent me a message so um yeah so she said in her lecture that my guru maharaj said that um when you pray to krishna like don't try to be here if you're really like here you know so just be like realistic and the whole point is like that you recognize krishna is the supreme personality of godhead so even if you come to him with your material desires you're going to the right person right so since then i was like cool i'm gonna tell krishna about all my material desires you know i don't really you know i'm i'm pretty devotional serviced out right now like i think i've hit my max capacity of devotional service. Like, I can't do any more devotional service. I physically am unable, mentally, spiritually unable. There's there's just, I can't ask for more, you know? But, you know, I could do a, a couple more kata around my property. <laughs> you know, like, pray for the well-being of my daughter and hope, you know, she grows up well and whatever, like. Or... Uh, you know, like recently a friend of mine isn't doing very well. I, I pray for her every day um, that she becomes better. Things like that. Or sometimes I just go and see Radha and be like, Hey, how's it going? You look good today. I like this. I like this. I like this. I like this. You looking good. See you later. <laughs> you know, and then there's people next to me. They're like crying. They're like, Bhagavan. <laughs> Like, I'm like, hey, Krishna, you're looking really nice today. <laughs> I am a mess. 
So I'd love to know. I mean, if it's it's if it's like a tip top deep secret, you don't have to tell me. But please leave me a comment. Leave me a comment. Tell me what do you pray for? What do you see around the bottom of? Because I really like. Oh my god, I love your flower basket today. Oh my god, I love your garland today. Look at how they did your turban today. You're looking so good. Oh my god, blah blah blah. blah. Or sometimes I'm like, you know, Krishna, I just need to lose twenty pounds. <laughs> So that was my hot take. What do you pray for? Um, now let's move on to Sage Advice on Instagram. I asked if you had any questions for me that I could answer here on my podcast. And here's just a couple questions you all sent me. So at the time, I was preparing to do my very first dance. As you know, as you may not know, I uh, actually have been learning Odyssey since 2018 off, off and on. And uh, I really committed myself to it um, this year. And uh, I did my first dance like a couple months ago. And um, so some, someone asked, who's my dance guru? My dance guru is named uh, Guru Mat- <clears throat> <clears throat> Sorry. My dance guru is named Guru Madan Mohan Das. He's from Vrindavan. Uh, his guru is named Guru Pratap Narayan Mishra and also Guruma Kunjalata Mishra, uh, both very well known in the dance community in Vrindava and like so many people I know have, have learned Odissi dance from them. So very, very expert. And uh, Madhur Mohan Prabhu has been a dancer for like almost, almost 30 years, maybe like 25 years. Um, so he's very, very, very skilled in what he does. Um, so I'm really lucky. He's I, if you know me in person, I'm like very very clumsy. I'm not like flexible. I am not athletic. I'm not I'm not anything. Like you know, you know, you know. You've seen me. You know. Um, <clears throat> but uh, Guruji is like very very patient and very kind and devoted to Jagannath and devoted to Seva. So I'm really lucky um, that he's teaching. In my board, I hope he continues to do so. I'll leave his uh, contact info in the description box. If anyone's interested in taking classes, he does uh, in-person classes in my board. He also does online classes. Um, yeah, so he's he's really a nice teacher. So and my dance went well. Everyone really liked it. It's a it was a, a song called Kede Chanda. It's about how wonderful Krishna is and and some of the feats that he did, like. Um, destroying demons, uh, eating dirt, and showing the universe in his mouth, and then killing Putana, uh, stealing of the cowherd boys, so things like that. Um, so I think I think it went well for my very 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 first dance. I generally don't dance for anybody. This person asked, "Share some Mayapur tea, girl, girl. You know who you are that asked this question, girl." I'm not going to share any real Mayapur tea with you because that would be crazy. Uh, I'll share some like personal tea that's also kind. It's not really tea. It's not tea. And I'm, I've am i told you about it before because it was driving me crazy at the time. So many people ask me, Prima, how come you're not doing a drama? I haven't seen a drama from you lately. I miss, I miss watching her dramas, whatever. Yeah, there's a reason for that. There's a big reason for that. So the last time I tried to do a drama was exactly a year ago, actually. Um, and... So I went to the, so basically the only stage we have in Mayapur is the Samadhi Auditorium on the ISKCON campus. I went to the in charge and I said, hey, um, now the holiday's over. I, me and some devotees, we wanna do a drama just for the community. We're not, you know, we don't, you know, I've known this person like 10 years, you know, we're good friends. I know his daughter, blah, blah, blah. I was like, I mean, we're not good friends, but I mean, friendly terms. Okay, anyways, so I was like, can we use the Samadhi Auditorium for rehearsal and um, for the performance? And he says, it's 500 rupees per day. And I have to give a 10,000 rupee deposit in advance if I want to use it, non-refundable. And I got the shock of my life. I said, but this is... Um, this is just for the community. It's it's for fun. It's not like a personal thing I'm doing here, you know? I'm not charging tickets. Like, if you know my dramas, I, I just ask for donations. 
but um, it's free. Anybody can come and, and watch it um, and enjoy themselves. It's just a fun thing to do with the, for the community. And he insisted, no, because, you know, the Samadhi is a lot of upkeep now. And to maintain it, uh, he has to start asking a fee. And it just, like, left such a sour taste in my mouth. Like, here I'm doing a seva for the community. I don't get anything out of this, you know? I, I mean, I get the satisfaction of doing seva for the community, and that's it. But, like, I don't get money or fame. In fact, like, doing the costumes and all that stuff, like, that costs money. And sometimes I don't get enough donations in, and I have to pay out of my own pocket. And I'm okay with that. I don't, it's, it's not an impediment for me, you know? I just want to do something for the community, for, for the young people, for my friends, for, you know, just to get together. It gives the community a reason to get together and enjoy an experience together. So it just left such a sour taste in my mouth. Eventually, like, then somebody like someone on my team contacted a member of management and then they had to talk to him and then he was like fine they can use the samadhi for free but whatever donations they get they have to give a donation to the samadhi which i was always doing anyways so again it was like it just it was just like not it was not nice it was not nice and it left me like just fuming and I wish, if somebody could give me like a good plot of land, I will find the funds and I will build my own theater so that community members can come and just like enjoy a show. I'll put a movie theater. And like you, people, local people who wanna make a movie, a little five minutes, whatever, however long, they can come, they can put their little movie up. And then I'll put like classrooms on the next floor. So like if you want to take a dance class or an acting class or whatever, there's classrooms there for you. You can go and take some classes with like big mirrors and A's. Like I want to do something like nice, you know, but property here is expensive. But I could, if I got land, I could build that. I could build that. I'd love to do something like that for the community. That's kind of... That's one of my goals one day. That's, that's one of the things I asked Krishna for. I'm like, Krishna, if you just give me a plot of land. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make you a theater. So that was that really, really, really bothered me. Um, the, they just didn't want to let us use the Samadhi Auditorium. And let me tell you, it's not like the Samadhi Auditorium is always booked either. Like half of the year is just like collecting bats and rats. And I'm not being like, I'm not, I'm not like, exaggerating on the bats and rats like there was many times i've come in that smarty auditorium and there's like bats and rats like dead ones living ones all over anyone who's been there they know so that that's tea on that so then like not long after that like summer passed and then there was the sucky's appearance days right and i pushed myself and made myself an opportunity to have some performances for each of their appearance days which was so fun and everyone loved it. It was a great community um, program and the deities loved it, I feel. Um, Janani Vas Prabhu loved it. Um, he told me that he wanted to have a festival every day. He said, I wanna build a stage at the back of the temple and every day you should do a drama. I was like, cool, bet, I'm, I'm there, I'm there. You say the word, I'm there. So anyway, so then um, Vasanta Panchami comes up. A beautiful festival where the deities wear yellow and I was like you know they look so beautiful this time of year and really all we do is we go we take darshan we're like yay they're all yellow and then we go home you know it would be great if we could have another community program you know like in Odissi there's a dance called Vasanta Pallavi which is about it's a springtime dance about Krishna and you know, I, I was looking for pastimes about Krishna in the springtime, and I found a couple really nice ones that I would love to perform. And so I asked, and they said the response I got from management at the temple was that only 12-year-olds are allowed to perform for Radha Madhava. Let me actually, you know what I'm going to do? 
it was it was something really weird like that it was like yeah devotees who are dancing and performing dramas in the temple should be kids around 12 years old and i replied back i said i don't work with kids that are 12 years old because it affects the quality so tell me this this is where i was like starting to pop off tell me where in Shastra does it say that only 12-year-olds can perform for Radha Madhava? See, this is why I need another person with me, because I will pop off. I will pop off. Um, I, if you know me, you know I don't really have a very good filter. Like, I'll just say whatever. Um, and usually I need another person with me to be like, Prima, you need to be quiet right now. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd be talking too much. So, like, tell me where in Shastra does it say that you have to be 12 to perform for Radha Madhava? And is it only for dance and dramas, or does that apl apply to, like, puja? Does it apply to the arti? Does it apply to um, dressing the deities? Does it apply to making the flower garlands? Or is it just dancing and drama for Radha Madhava? Like, where, where does that, where is that line? Like, and where does it come from? And why, why 12? What happens at 13? Are they too, like, sexual by 13 that they can't perform for Radha Madhava? Right? Are we sexualizing them at 13 so 13-year-olds can't perform? Is that what we're saying? Like, what, what, what exactly is it about 12? So I just, I'm, I'm just, like, over it. You know, I'm over it. I'm over the drama with management. It's never been, you know, I could do, I could do a drama every week if you asked me to. I could do it. I could do it. You know, I love our community. We have the, I've said this every time. The only thing that keeps me in my poor is this community. We have the best community in the world, right? Um, I love everyone I perform with. I think they're great. I think we have a very talented community. Um, but it's like this management BS. I can't, I can't keep doing it anymore. I'm, I'm, I'm too tired, you know, to deal with management so that that's that's t that's the t um as to why i'm not really uh doing dramas anymore but if anybody has a property i'd, I'd be happy to build a theater and, and do my own thing that's also why i i've been saying this a lot i really just want to get into making movies because you can't really own a movie like i can make it put it up on youtube and everybody can enjoy it unfortunately not together you know like the fun of the drama is that we're all sitting together and we're all enjoying it together but like with a movie you're kind of just bumming at home i gotta adjust this camera sorry hang on a sec there we go that's better yeah um but i mean it it, it is what it is this, that's just what it is so yeah so thanks for the question. It's a good question. I hope you got a little tea out of that. So this person said, due to some ongoing problems in life and a difficult financial situation, out of frustration and stress, I made a mistake. Ooh. When I used to be hungry and didn't have money to spend on fancy places, I would eat from a local stall and the food had garlic. What can I do for atonement? Okay, thank you for this question, um, and thank you for being so personal. Um, I know it's not easy um, to be so vulnerable. This person asked it anonymously, so I don't actually know this person. Um, so my answer could vary depending on who it is, how old they are. Um, so first of all, sorry you're having problems in your life and you're having some Difficult financial situations. I know stuff like that is not easy. Um, let me answer your question, what to do for atonement. So when it comes to like garlic, and this is my opinion, of course. This is, this is my opinion. When it comes to like garlic and onion, that is more of like a self-purificatory thing because garlic and onion are in the modes of passion and ignorance. So when you eat foods like that, it puts you in those modes. It's not, um, I know there's some pastime about garlic and onion having something to do with cow slaughter or something, the blood of the cow or something, but like real, let's, let's, let's talk about like what it is, right? As far as what it does to our bodies. 
is that it increases the modes of passion, increases the modes of ignorance, makes it harder for us to focus on sattva guna. And we need to be in the mode of goodness to focus on Krishna. So, you know, it makes our spiritual life better. So I don't think there's anything you can do to atone for it, is what I'm saying. The, the not eating onion and garlic is for you. It, it's an austerity that you have to do to achieve sattva guna. It's not a sin, is what I'm saying. Because you only atone for a sin. You don't atone for, you know, not eating the right food. If you had eaten beef, I would have been like, yeah, you have to atone for that. If you had eaten a chicken, I would have been like, yeah, an egg or whatever, you know? like. But garlic and onion, to me, is like passion and ignorance. It's, it's supposed to be helping your mindset. So there's no atonement for it. You just have to stop doing it. Um, so what I see here is that when I used to be hungry and didn't have money to spend on fancy places, I would eat from a local stall and the food had garlic. So the first thing is, is you're acting impulsively. I see that you're um, hungry already and then you're eating at some food stall instead of nourishing yourself or eating somewhere somewhere fancy i think is what you wrote um and, and i guess my question is is like why do you have to eat out um most devotees do not eat from public places most devotees will cook at home eat at home or eat from reliable places like the temple or you know an iskon restaurant or even like there's Godium, I believe Godiaman also follows the no onion, no garlic thing. They do. Yeah, they do. Um, so find places that has like cheap prasadam available for you. There must be some local temple or restaurant that does no onion, no garlic. And it's usually relatively a, a fair price. Even if, and what you're really trying to do is just fill your belly until you get home, right? Like, you don't mind if it's just a little kitchery. And also another thing you should do... See, this is why, like, I've said it before, I'm saying it again. I am a big proponent of journaling. I said it before, I say it again. You fail to plan, then you plan to fail. Does that make sense? If you plan your meals for the week... Okay, I'm gonna eat this and you do some kind of prep you quickly toss it together and you leave the house for the day you have your meal you know I'm hungry so I'm gonna eat this there's actually a study that says that the most people who follow through on their goals create something called if then statements if I feel hungry then I'll eat a prepared meal If I'm hungry, then I'll eat a meal I prepared. If I'm hungry, I'll drink a bottle of water just to fill my belly until I get home if I'm on the way home. If then st statements are simple like that, like, because then you already know in your mind what you're going to do instead of waiting until you're hungry and then you're just doing anything out of desperation. Um... An if then statement could be like, if I'm going to wake up early, then I need to set my alarm. Easy. So make an if-then statement. Um, what are you going to do if you, you're out and you feel hungry? I usually just keep some snacks in my purse. Snacks are cheap. They're not expensive. And go home and have a nice meal. You know, and, and cooking at home is not that expensive. You know, bread peanut butter banana or some jelly or you have a pressure cooker rice dal couple vegetables kitchery um and commit to that lifestyle so a, a, you know don't worry about the atonement part of it just think about um making a plan so that you don't fall into the same trap again and again that's my that's my suggestion to you so thank you for that question. That was really, that was nice. So 
I hope you enjoyed today's podcast um, here on the floor of my daughter's room because it is our AC room. It's the only room in our house that has an AC, so <laughs> that's why that's why we're in here. And if you enjoyed this solo podcast, let me know, um, and I'll keep I'll keep it up. I'll do it every week if you guys like it. Be sure to check out the links below to find out more about us. You can watch the podcast here on YouTube and listen on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and Google Podcasts. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Be good to each other and be good to yourselves. And thank you for being damn good. Here it is this week's Harinam. Thank <laughs> you.